to this Tech and Trains channel video where I will show you how to convert this Ringfield motor in pieces into a CD slash DVD player motor widely available online using these kits. So here are all the parts from the Ringfield motor. They are taken apart, including the wheels. It does not necessarily take apart the wheels, but I just took them apart because I needed to clean the motor beforehand. It's recommended before you do this process that you clean the motor, all of it out, so that when you insert the new motor, it will be clean. For this tutorial, we'll be using Strathpeffers Junction uh, conversion kit, and this comes with a motor and adapter. Also, it does come with instructions downloadable offline and brief guidance. For the first step, we just need the case from the Ringfield motor, we need the sticker, and we need the adapter supplied. Apply the sticker to the Ringfield motor casing. Please note I discovered that the sticker was slightly large and didn't fully stick in, but you need to make sure you get the middle hole lined up with the rest of the Ringfield casing. For the next step, we will be using the adapter and it is advisable to take the retainer off before fitting the adapter and we need to put the adapter in the ring field casing as shown here. So we now got to the stage where the adapter is in place, we just got the retainer here and here is our motor. So we can, f before we put this in, we, we need to thread the wires through the adapter to avoid them getting damaged. So we've now got the um, motor threaded through, and we can, I mean the wires threaded through, we can proceed to install the motor. Right, so the motor is now in place, and we can fit the retainer, and see how it looks shortly. Right, so the motor and retainer are now in place, it should be held firmly, and we can get on fully with the rest, shortly. So I will be using the cog from the old Ringfield motor, I will not be using the plastic one, but feel free to do so if you wish, but I will be using the metal cog. Where when you glue this on, we don't want any glue flying into the motor armature, so it is advisable to use as little as possible and do anything to prevent the glue from flying down. Right, so the cog is now glued on, we can put all the other cogs back on, and wire this thing up. Right, so I've just got all the cogs back on, I did have a few issues with some of them not um, jamming. So when you put these together, make sure they do not jam. Oops, it's jam. It's advisable to check them with a 9 volt battery to make sure they're working before you start to wire them into the train. Right now it's time to start wiring up, so as you can see, I've got the old wires from the Ringfield motor, this one plugs in there, it's the one that takes the path from the front to the back of the motor unit, as you can see, just wired up there, um, I'm not guaranteeing this is the right way round, still needs testing, so don't put permanent joints on it at this stage. So as you can see it's working, the only slight issues is I've wired in everything the wrong way round so the directional lighting is the wrong way round on the power car as is the motor which is why the dummy car down here is showing the wrong direction simply because the motor is running in the wrong direction so it looks like it's running in the wrong direction but this is running in the complete opposite direction to all the other trains but overall the motor is considerably quicker considerably runs considerably better at low speeds and is a very effective solution to any problems with your Ringfield motors. Thank you for watching Tech and Trains channel. So this train has been greatly improved by this motor, 
I hope you enjoyed this video and goodbye.